Good afternoon, everybody. I have a very long introduction, so I'm starting a couple of minutes ahead of time. That's a kind of an oxymoron. But uh, I want, uh, I think so. Can you give me a little more juice? Um, I want to welcome all of you to our inaugural fall 2018 SEAC seminar series. You couldn't tell it by the temperature outside, but it is fall. Uh, <laughs> I'm especially gratified to see all the students here. Lots of new faces, lots of bright, energetic, enthusiastic faces. Uh, we are very, very grateful that you made the time on a Friday afternoon where you can have happy hour uh, instead, but uh, you had some refreshments, so maybe that compensates. So um, I'd like to start uh, by uh, using a quote. And the quote is, because uh, in my opinion, the quotes tell something special about the person uh, about whom the quote uh, pertains. So the quote for today is, plants will speak to you once you embrace technology and listen to the data. Does that sound familiar? I hope you so. I hope so, yeah. <laughs> okay, so I'm introducing today um, Murat Kachira, who is professor of uh, bioengineering. There is a new name and I have to get it right. Biosystems. Uh, biosystems engineering. They drop the agriculture for reasons unknown to me, but it's easier on the tongue now. Um, Murat is not only professor of this department, but he's also a member of the SEAC faculty. And most importantly, uh, last semester, late in the semester, he took over the directorship of this center. And uh, he is going to apply his enthusiasm and his knowledge and uh, all the other attributes that I have on paper, but I don't want to spend the time enumerating uh, to this new position. So he started this career in uh, Turkey, for those of you who don't know it, in a um, university called, uh, say it? Uh, Çukurova University. Çukurova Un University. It's it, on the website, it shows as Kokova. And I thought maybe the Russians have taken over Turkey, but <laughs> I guess that didn't, that didn't happen. Um, so uh, after getting his uh, bachelor's degree in uh, food and agriculture biosystems, uh, he retained this connectivity between food production and engineering. And that's what we see most recently in his uh, career today. So he has followed up with an interdisciplinary approach to growing food more efficiently, healthier, with fewer resources, all under the cover of greenhouses, namely um, um, controlled environment agriculture. And I was going to say a few more things but time is now running late, and so I think the audience is ready for you. Go for it. And I'm ready for them as well. All right. Thank you. Thank you, Rafi. Um, I really appreciate this uh, wonderful uh, introduction. I don't know if I deserve such beautiful introduction and makes me, you know, uh, get red and feel really shy. So thank you very much again. And also, I would like to thank you for all your efforts. Uh, so we maintain and we grow this uh, uh, Cumbering Environment Seminars here at the CAC. And I also want to thank uh, Dave Bogner uh, from the Cyber Communications uh, team in helping us you know, to make sure that we are also uh, uh, connected uh, with our uh, enthusiasts uh, out there uh, following us from the um, from the web. I heard that there's about 11, 12, 13 people. This is 20 now? Oh my goodness, this is a record high. I don't know what we did to, to uh, deserve this. Uh, but um, yeah, so, um, uh, and also Dene uh, Pantoja, uh, she's our new program coordinator, really helping us to make sure that, you know, we have this kind of program here and then uh, and all that good, uh, tasteful things that you see back there. Um, and also marketing and branding of this. Uh, 
uh, program activities and also to you and thank you for being here a, on, on a Friday late in the Friday and I also want to thank uh, everyone joining us from the from the web I think uh, I feel there's interest uh, there's connectivity and and just wanting to know and, and learn uh, uh, what we're doing and what are the things that we are kind of working on here at the Controlled Environment Agriculture Center. Um, it's, it's, I'm really honored to start our seminar series and Rafi um, uh, just asked me if I could be the first speaker uh, this semester and, um, and I told him sure how can I, how can I refuse your uh, you know, uh, invitation and um, at that point I wasn't sure what I was going to talk and I told him you know give me a couple of days so I can just uh, share with you a title and maybe a brief you know description and narrative and then he goes the next day I see the title already out there in the Horde Daily and you know uh, uh, really uh, asking from me to talk about my my observations my learning my experiences through the travels that I did um, for the past year so it says my travel log 2018 so I'm going to kind of rewind the time you know take the time back to August 2017 with you and I'm going to take you uh, with me to the journey that I had over the uh, course of this uh, past year. So I'm going to dim the slide a little bit if, if that's okay, if I may do that so you can maybe see the um, uh, slide better. So um, and this is really going to be some of the uh, you know observations that I had technically attending to these meetings and why I attend these meetings and what I do there and also some of the fun things that I am able to kind of uh, enjoy uh, with the minimal amount of time that I have uh, participating these these meetings and I think we should make this a kind of uh, uh, a, a practice maybe a, a, an event uh, that you know whenever uh, one of us uh, travels to a conference that we kind of uh, come back and then share uh, these observations and you know what we see uh, not it doesn't have to be formal uh, but maybe over a Brown make lunch or whatever uh, to really talk about uh, uh, these experiences. So I'm going to start with the world map and a fly together. Uh, so uh, back in 2017, August 2017, um, I started my travel uh, to attend uh, Greensys Symposium, Greensys 2017 in Beijing, China. And this actually symposium is one of the signature symposiums that we have under the International Society of Horticultural Sciences that brings together experts from around the world um, to talk about uh, new advancements and innovation and crop management production practices relates to the greenhouse systems as well as plant factories using artificial lighting especially in the few uh, several uh, uh, years as the horticultural lighting technology was uh, improving and enhancing and the interest uh, uh, that we have or the industry has out there. So it was organized by my colleagues and friends, Dr. Qichen Yang from Chinese Academy of Agricultural Sciences. I had the honor and pleasure of actually hosting him for two months here at CAC in my lab a couple of years ago. And he leads the uh, Controlled Environment Agricultural Lab at the uh, Chinese Academy of Agricultural Sciences. Merrill and I also uh, had a chance to visit him a couple of times in Beijing. And also Dr. Wei Hong Lu uh, from Nanjing Agriculture University is serving as the conveners of this symposium. And the, it, it was organized in uh, China National Convention Center, which is really uh, uh, close to the bird nest, uh, uh, as well as the, uh, the cube, uh, uh, as if you remember from uh, back in uh, 2008 uh, Beijing Olympics. And this is uh, right in the heart of actually Olympic City uh, in, in Beijing. Um, the, so the participation actually to this symposium uh, generally is around 200-250 people uh, when we kind of travel around the world. It's a biannual event by the way. Um, and in this case in China we had about 500 participants attending. Of course most of them were from uh, China but you can see the kind of participation uh, diversity and uh, uh, from around the world. Um, these are mostly uh, researchers and scientists um, uh, and there, there are, there's also industry participation during the symposiums. 
But here is the uh, the topics that were discussed during the during that uh, event, and uh, you can see the the main emphasis being on the plant factory technology, the lighting technology. Here, most of the focus is actually in vertical farming systems, plant factories with horticultural lighting, but also there were presentations about uh, LED lighting in greenhouse systems as well. Uh, you can see talks on greenhouse systems use and design, um, uh, talks on production and management uh, practices here, more on the actually biology, the plant physiology side of the crop management and production uh, aspects, as well as climate control and modeling uh, applications, because now we're talking more about smart agriculture, digital agriculture, artificial intelligence, so there were talks about uh, these areas uh, in this in this uh, in this meeting, um, uh, we have keynote speakers uh, for this symposium. So one of the keynote speakers is our colleague and friend Leo Marcellis. Leo uh, leads the um, horticulture and product uh, physiology group at Wageningen University, and his focus is primarily on plant physiology and environmental effects on crop production. And he stressed in his talk. Uh, about the need of really understanding crop physiology to be able to have sustainability in food production systems in controlled environment agriculture. It's not just engineering, but we also need a good understanding of plant physiology and biology. And Dr. Juan Montero um, a, a, was another a keynote speaker. He was the director of environmental horticulture program at the National Research uh, Institute in Barcelona, Spain, and he has been recently involved in urban horticulture, urban agriculture uh, initiatives and projects in Barcelona, Spain. There's so much interest and investment also coming from local governments in that area, uh, in, in that country. So he talked about some of those projects and how they're implementing it and how they're really connecting with the public uh, in the you know, urban interface to, to really um, uh, uh, to really attract uh, public uh, for uh, control of mom and agriculture in urban urban settings. Other uh, keynote speaker was Dr. Toyoki Kozai. Most of you uh, probably know him. He's the godfather of plant factories, vertical farming with artificial lighting. And he addressed uh, in his talk uh, to uh, moving towards with the next generation smart closed plant production systems in vertical farming settings with artificial lighting. Um, he has been the president of Japan Plant Factory Association as well. It's a leading research and development center um, where we also have a CEA connection historically through our research collaborations and um, uh, faculty and staff working with, the, with the, their programs. We also have Alex Feldman, one of our graduates actually, is working in the plant factory association and plant factory facility there as we speak. Um, the, the, uh, finally, the other keynote speaker was Dr. Lia Tian Li, uh, Vice President of Shenyang Agriculture University, and he's a member of the Chinese Academy of Engineering, and he has a lot of contributions actually to the earlier studies of Chinese solar greenhouse systems from an engineering uh, 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 perspective. So uh, he was the uh, other speaker. As I mentioned, Leo really talked about uh, keying, pay attention to uh, understanding of plant systems and plant uh, biology for sustainable crop production system. And he kind of addressed also their initiatives in, in Netherlands in terms of improving efficiency of greenhouse systems, plant factories, and energy savings uh, and energy consumption in those um, uh, production systems. And they have this uh, goal of uh, uh, minimizing their energy uh, uh, usage and savings by 50% and they see great potential using LED uh, lighting systems because of their efficiencies, because of the way the light is utilized by the crop uh, system. And um, he also talked about inter uh, canopy lighting with LEDs and, uh, and, and mentioned that 15% uh, imp improvement they were observing when they um, practice uh, inner canopy uh, uh, lighting uh, with LED uh, lighting systems. Um, Dr. Kozai's talk pretty much uh, really uh, underlined the uh, the light environment effects being affected also by the other environmental variables such as temperature, carbon dioxide concentrations, relative humidities, or the water content of the air, 
and also plant canopy architecture uh, being really important in terms of how the plant canopy uh, uh, receives that light and the, the efficiency of that light used in the production system. Uh, physiological state of the crop, how we can monitor, quantify that, and maybe use that to our advantage to manage and operate this system. Uh, species, cultivars, um, and also skills of the growers uh, being really important key factor um, in the in these uh, production systems. He also talked about uh, uh, green light, uh, including green light in the lighting system, not just you know the common uh, LED lighting systems which use uh, reds and blues, but also importance of green light because green light penetrates deeper into the canopy, enhancing the photosynthesis of plant canopies, as well as morphology and plant architecture, enhancing or contributing to the secondary metabolites for uh, crop production in vertical farming settings, flowering control, uh, disease resistance, and also better working environment, more comfortable working environment for the operators, the human, uh, working in that uh, pinkish environment. Um, Dr. Eiji Goto works on the um, high value uh, 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 produce or crops uh, grown in vertical farming systems and greenhouses, um, pharmaceuticals, nutraceuticals, and he talked about uh, a research uh, which used uh, transcriptome analyses to determine secondary metabolite paste path pathways as a response to environmental stresses or environmental conditions, mainly um, UV light, ozone, and temperature uh, treatments. And he mentioned that they developed a methodology without affecting the quality or the yield of the crop. They were able to actually enhance the, um, the secondary metabolites or antioxidant capacities um, uh, using their uh, methodology, uh, working with Rassica nepus and Nicotina bentaminia uh, 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 species. So, and he dreams that one day he would like to have complete manipulation of the taste, the flavor, and the function of functions of the food uh, to be able to achieve the taste as well as the uh, this uh, uh, nutritional content uh, or secondary metabolites from the the, the produce, um, playing with the amount of ozone or UV light. Uh, 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 for the crops or low temperatures, environmental uh, water temperatures, nutrient solution temperatures, and UV light really to uh, enhancing the flavor of uh, 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 the, the produce. Um, so all we of that symposium, I think my observation was that um, there is great interest, there is uh, interesting work uh, going on around the world in terms of using, considering advanced technologies to really overcome the complexities of vertical farms, plant factories, as well as greenhouse systems. So some of these technologies that are being evaluated, studied, and improved are uh, LED lighting, uh, resource conserving control strategies, um, enhancing the engineering of or the designs of these uh, production systems, Internet of Things with imaging applications to quantify the growth and health status of the crop, Big data is everywhere with artificial intelligence uh, and deep learning, machine learning uh, interest there. Um, and also uh, the omics uh, uh, studies uh, with DNA sequencing, uh, uh, gene editing is being discussed so uh, we can improve hopefully uh, the performance uh, of the crop in terms of resource utilization uh, and in, in, in its integration with the engineering applications. That's where the actually greater potentials are. So the phenome, genome, and environmental analyses, and also the need for uh, robotics, uh, automation, as well as uh, nanotechnologies and solar technologies integrated to these controlled environment agriculture systems. Um, for vertical farming systems, as we look at future, uh, some of the, um, uh, the bullet points that I mentioned is considered as well as phenotyping and really um, looking at the um, interaction um, uh, for the phenome being as a function of genome and environment, really understanding of that interaction and integrating that to the production systems and also engineering uh, when we engineer these, these uh, production and technology platforms. Um, enhancing the operator's experiences is another area that is really a, a huge uh, attraction. 
uh, for research as well as for uh, commercial companies, for example, with the use of uh, uh, argumented reality or virtual reality, so you can have this uh, enhanced uh, feeling of or connectivity with the, the biological systems or physical systems as the uh, human operators really works in that uh, environment. And also thinking about evolutional vertical farming systems, really considering, you know, uh, the, how these uh, evolutions will take place, take place as we look at the future vertical farming operations. So among the other 13 uh, invited speakers, I was invited to make a presentation about our work here at the CAC. And my emphasis in my talk was related to climate control applications, resource use, uh, efficiency improvements in vertical farming systems um, um, in, in, in my talk. And of course, we had uh, Ying Zhang making a presentation from her work, as well as Kensaka Okada. Uh, but I was also really proud and happy to see some of our former uh, graduates from this program. Efren Fitz, most of you may remember Efren. He graduated from Biosystems Engineering, worked here uh, uh, at CAC uh, uh, with me uh, uh, as a postdoc researcher, postdoctoral researcher. Um, um, Hans uh, was a graduate student of uh, Cherry Kubota here, he graduated, and now he joined the lab of uh, Ricardo Hernandez in North Carolina State University, another graduate of this program, as well as Rio Matsuda. Uh, he was the postdoc uh, researcher for Cherry Kubota. Now he's a faculty member in the University of Tokyo. So right after the conference, uh, we, we were really excited, and we just uh, uh, used this blurb, UA Wildcats Bear Down During the Green City Symposium. And it was really, um, I was really happy to um, see this group uh, there. There was this huge support uh, and investment from the Chinese government, as well as Chinese Academy of Agricultural Sciences, some of the representatives of the government here, and Chinese Academy of Science members, along with the keynote, some of the keynote and invited speakers there. Of course, when we go to these meetings, we also party. We just don't do technical stuff. So the nights are the only times that we have time because from 6.30 and 7 in the morning until 6, 7 at night, we are in a room just following this uh, really interesting discussions and presentations. But here is uh, some of the shots that I was able to collect, uh, you know, to take uh, during my walking through the uh, uh, convention center. These are actually part of uh, Olympic uh, City, Olympic uh, complex there. Uh, and, and here is a dinner with the keynote and invited speakers, um, with our conveners. And we were also given the opportunity to have this wonderful experience on the Great Wall of China for the gala dinner. And, um, and they even lighted up a section of the uh, wall as we look to that direction uh, on that evening with some dancing, some music, um, some uh, good food, and good conversations with friends, uh, old friends, and also the new friendships that we developed there. So that was the China. And right after China, uh, probably about a week later, I came and I had to go to Madagascar, to Antananarivo. That's the capital of Madagascar. Because executive committee of the International Society of Agri uh, Horticultural Sciences meets every year. And I am serving as the chair of the Precision Horticulture uh, Commission, Engineering Commission. Um, and I have to be there and the report about the activities of this commission when it comes to symposiums, meetings, workshops. And this time it was in, 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 in that region because SHS wanted to have a lot more uh, connectivity with, with Africa and then the part of the world. And there was another symposium on plant, plant genetic resources. So we were invited and we kind of uh, uh, visited um, uh, Antananarivo uh, and have had our uh, meetings there. So during these meetings, basically, all the commission chairs uh, get together with the ISHS board. And we look at you know several years ahead of us, scheduling of these symposiums, meetings, workshops, where they are going to be, who are the conveners going to be, what will be the emphasis and topics of these meetings. And hopefully without overlapping, without conflicting times, so everything runs uh, smoothly. So when we discuss these uh, symposiums and meetings, we also consider you know, how this meeting or symposium affects the horticulture, the industry, the tourism and economy of that region. So these are all discussed in, in every detail. Um, 
I have been serving as the chair of that group. Of course, I don't do all of this myself. I have a, uh, I had a vice chair from uh, Portuguese, Evora University, Batima Baptista, and we have eight working groups in precision horticulture, dealing with lighting horticulture, greenhouse design, environmental control, mechanization, robotics, and computational fluid dynamics. So I have one group, uh, working group chair from around the world helping me to kind of work on these activities. So I receive report and feedback from them, and I go and present our activity to the board and in front of other colleagues. Um, so after that, I came back. Then I went to um, uh, Columbia, um, University of Missouri. I was invited to give a, an invited presentation um, in their uh, Division of Plant Sciences program because University of Missouri in Plant Sciences Division is investing money into developing a new greenhouse complex with about $10, $15 million. So they wanted to hear some of the activities uh, that we are doing and um, what we are working on and how we are looking at the future in terms of controlled environment agriculture. Um, then coming back from there, um, I went to early in 2018, I was invited to visit a large urban agriculture vertical farming facility in Newark, New Jersey, Iro Farms Company. Uh, they are really uh, a large company in vertical farming systems. And um, uh, some discussions about maybe future collaborative opportunities. They support us with other also uh, urban agriculture vertical uh, farming companies that are operating in US when we um, develop proposals or submit proposals to different funding agencies. And this time, um, I was invited to visit uh, this facility for that sort of uh, discussion. Came back, and this is in February, I believe, um, um, with an initial connection and interaction through Merle. Merle has a very good collaboration with Japan and Okinawa Research Center through um, our sensei, Dr. Tadashi Takakura, another engineer in controlled environment agriculture, we received our guests from Okinawa Research Center. They are interested in growing their programs, their uh, research activities, and they would like to also work with us. They would like to come here and interact with us. Um, Merle stayed about, I think, two months or three months of the summer in the past, and we are hoping to actually um, continue our discussion so, uh, so how we can work together or how we can help each other, learn from each other. And we visited Wholesome Harvest Company, which is located here uh, south of Tucson, um, Amado, Arizona. Um, they are high-tech, semi-closed, uh, greenhouse technology-based company growing tomatoes uh, with uh, organic, uh, using organic fertilizers. Um, some discussions about, uh, you know, maybe collaborative opportunities uh, with them as well, and they are interested in our graduates too. And here, Stacy is with me, uh, joining the visit, as well as Kensaka Okada. We kind of really appreciated his uh, interpretation and communication. At some point, we had deeper uh, discussions, and our host was uh, Edgardo, or he goes by Jose, Jose Torres, uh, to give us that beautiful tour. And after that, um, I think this is um, March, I believe. Um, I went to um, uh, Ljubljana, Slovenia, um, where a group of uh, a consortium funded by a European Union 2020 Horizon project focusing on um, um, novel and integrated approach methodologies to really enhance the uh, crop production using tomato as the model uh, to really improve resource uh, utilization. And this is a large group. The, the, the people and team you see in the picture is only one, I think, third of the, tour, the full uh, 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 consortium of, mm, from 10, 15 uh, European Union countries. And I serve as the, one of the external advisory board member uh, in that uh, project called uh, TOMRES. And here are they are actually focused. They are really looking at combined water and nutrient stresses as being a major problem for tomato farmers, not only in field conditions, but also those in controlled environments. And they are looking at selection among 10,000 available accessions and rootstocks and evaluating their uh, performance under stress conditions. Uh, they are really looking into um, um, novel genotypes and management strategies to really reduce the use of nitrogen and phosphorus by about 
um, 20 percent and water input um, about 40 percent and environmental control strategies are also being investigated evaluated uh, with multiple tasks or work packages uh, dedicated or attached to different participating and collaborating institutions. Ljubljana is a beautiful place. The country is very small, um, about two, three, four million, I believe, something like that. I didn't have so much time. I was in the meeting most of the time, but I just got one afternoon, and that happened to be a, a beautiful afternoon where they had some farmer's market uh, close by. And along the way, uh, just walking around uh, the uh, conference place or meeting place, I was able to visit these beautiful uh, places, as you can see, a church, a kind of shopping and restaurant um, uh, complex here, uh, some historical uh, buildings uh, uh, in the central part of the town. And I really enjoyed visiting the farmer's market, just looking at, you know, okay, what type of crops they, they have there, what are the prices, and then how they're presenting it. I think that was one of the most exciting farmer's market I have ever been. Uh, it was so dynamic. They were really, uh, you know, um, offering uh, cheese. They're selling cheese, but they also offer free wine right there on the spot. And you know, it, it, there was a, a bake, a, a, you know, a, a bakery a portable, um, you know, offering bread and pizza. Or it was really fun. And here's mushrooms. Um, I took this for Barry actually, and I believe I shared it with you right after I came back some leafy crops, beautiful flowers, tomatoes, um, and um, yeah, that was really um, exciting afternoon for me. So after that, I went to North Carolina University uh, because we had our USDA, um, um, she's assigned there. I said, I, 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 we have USDA um, uh, multi-state uh, regional committee meeting on controlled environment technology and use our Center has been participating in this as, a, as, as one of the institutions. Cherry Kubota used to be uh, our, uh, she used to be our uh, lead in that uh, committee. And us, myself and Jean participating with our graduate students uh, at different times. So it was in uh, uh, Riley, North Carolina. And here is the host, Carlos uh, Hernandez, hosted that on the university campus. Um, a fun look here. In Arizona, they're all Arizona, you know, people, graduate, and um, and here is the uh, group uh, during that uh, meeting. Um, <clears throat> this is about 100, 150 researchers, scientists, again, with a good participation from the industry, mostly on the horticultural lighting side and environmental control system side. And they also presented about their vision and their new initiatives from the Plant Sciences Consortium to build new facilities. They are investing about 30, 40 million dollars to build their new controlled environment based uh, programs and buildings and facilities and also investing in faculty lineups uh, for this initiative. And they have a rooftop greenhouse right here with the associated labs and building office spaces. So they were really excited about it. Um, and here we are visiting the phytotron facilities, uh, indoor growth chambers, greenhouses with LED lighting. Uh, Ricardo's, these are mostly Ricardo's actually uh, research activities. He's focusing on LED lighting, uh, biomass, uh, crop quality with strawberries, different microgreens and, and leafy uh, crops. Um, and here's the phytotron, old phytotron facility. And we also um, got a chance to visit the Bayer and Syngenta uh, facilities during that visit with high, under high security uh, access uh, checkpoints. It was beautiful. It was a great facility. So I'm really also excited that we are going to hopefully soon have this uh, buyer uh, high-tech facility here in Marana. And uh, our um, we have been all connected with them, uh, working together with them, uh, thanks to Gene and his lead. Um, I think we are really excited about that opportunity and, and future uh, possibilities uh, for research and educational programs, internship programs, and employment for our students. Um, so next, I went to um, Diné College. Um, I hope that's the right one. Yeah, so we had this project funded through the Na uh, National uh, Science Foundation NRT program. This is the tra graduate traineeship program uh, uh, with emphasis on uh, food, energy, and water uh, nexus. 
And uh, this is a special project uh, because we are connected with in indigenous uh, communities here. Our collaborating uh, partner is Navajo Nation and two uh, Navajo Nation uh, colleges, Diné College and Navajo Technical University. If you just think that there are about 370 million indigenous people in about 90 different countries, and they represent about 5% of the world population, but they kind of represent 90% of the diversity, biodiversity. And however, they are <clears throat> they are they are um, challenged uh, when it comes to uh, access to water and food uh, uh, and energy infrastructure. In U.S. alone, um, about 15% of the uh, indigenous communities, Native uh, Americans, don't have access to uh, energy uh, source directly. When you talk about Navajo Nation. 35% of the community and population don't have access to potable water and power. So that's challenge, the uh, food insecurity, the malnutrition, and, and, and there are other challenges, uh, uh, quality of the water, contaminated water is an issue. So our project is actually bringing together seven different academic units across three colleges in the University of Arizona, um, and um, really uh, emphasizing the education and training of next uh, generation graduate students uh, with emphasis on off-the-grid systems for water management, brine management, and controlled environment-based food production systems. We are also trying to help them to, to uh, develop their educational curriculum uh, and, and course offerings uh, during, this, uh, during this project phase. Uh, so Becca Waller, uh, who is, uh, she is funded uh, through this program, and she's a master's student in our department. And um, Becca and I had an opportunity to visit uh, the Diné College. And Becca did a wonderful job presenting about sensors and instrumentation, a hands-on session to their staff and students. And I was able to speak in terms of controlled environment agriculture systems. So what might be the possibilities and opportunities for their uh, location? because. To be able to, uh, to succeed in this process, we really need, uh, need to understand the, the, the culture, the governance, the acceptability of technology from the indigenous communities. And the only way to succeed in this is to be able to, 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 to work with them, really to understand them. So that's what we have. That's the uniqueness of this project and program. So we came back, and then I went to, uh, this is July, to uh, Ohio State University. Cherry Kubota was our host for our um, uh, USDA and other USDA regional committee, uh, this time really focusing on greenhouse-based systems uh, on resource uh, use, resource management in commercial greenhouse systems. And uh, here we had one day of technical uh, presentations and summary of our activities from the uh, participating agricultural experiment stations. So we have agricultural experiment station that we need to go in and interact and kind of summarize our uh, activities. And, and, and these also committees, these meetings, uh, allows us to partner and to work together for larger grants funded through USDA and DOE and other funding agencies. So it really brings together this um, group of people, the network, to work on collaborative multi-state uh, projects. So Cherry is hosting here. We are visiting her facilities, new greenhouse. Um, um, uh, lab that she has, and she has been working mainly on basil growing in deep water culture system with her, with her student, uh, Daniel Gillespie. He was also a, a student in the Sustainable Plant Systems program here. She, he followed her uh, to Ohio, uh, and she, he was also one of the student members of the theme who won the Student Union uh, Rooftop Greenhouse Project, along with Brian Kaplan. Um, and she is presenting his uh, work here, and she's also uh, continuing to work on strawberries, looking into the environmental factors and effects um, for um, the strawberry uh, production. Um, my department, where I graduated uh, from, actually is right across the street, so I had the uh, one hour to kind of visit my uh, department. And here is the union, here is the Department of Food, Agriculture, and Biological Engineering. And one of my uh, colleagues there gave me, a, a, again, tour of the facility, so I kind of uh, uh, wanted to see what's going on. And here in the Pesticide Application Laboratory, I saw this setup. This was the, this, the, 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 the um, 
but the project and the uh, setup that I actually uh, I was hired as a part-time graduate student to do and involve in in the in a, in a project. So this is a laser-guided particle size velocimeter unit um, used for pesticide applications. And you can see this is not even a Pentium machine. I guess it was an IBM 266 or 366. It was still sitting there with the actual setup. So I said I have to take a picture in front of this. And um, this was my first paid job, I think in addition to the scholarship that I got from Turkish government. Uh, uh, this was a the small, really small project for a two-month period uh, where I started uh, helping a faculty member. Uh, this meeting was connected with the um, Cultivate, a horticultural trade show, which is really uh, one of the most important horticultural trade shows in North America. It happens, you know, occurs every year. And, um, and um, there are hundreds of uh, companies attending, participating. And I was, again, really proud as I, I believe Gene was too. Gene was with, with, with me there, uh, walking uh, you know, between the aisles there and then just really seeing our graduates through from this program, representing their com companies uh, and really having a great impact and contribution to the growth of the controlled demand agriculture industry. Faye Jia, Jeff Jia, Mrs. Nick, um, and with her uh, 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 friend from the Wattsworth Company, uh, Samantha, uh, Jeff works for Helios Spectra Horticultural Lighting Company, David Story, you may remember him. He's working for uh, Reader Hordemex uh, as an engineer for the climate control systems. Jochen Bach, uh, working for Rain Soil Company. And here, our Austin, our very own Austin Smith, working for a company. Um, he was there. Uh, these were some of the students that I was able to actually um, run into in, in that uh, one and a half hour time that we had. But later on, there's some other students also joined us. Will Kutcher is from Biosystems Engineering Department. And uh, I'm trying to see, and Hope Jones, very first, I think, students uh, graduated. Pat may remember, or Meryl or others may remember her, and joining us. And we took this, again, uh, picture uh, with really uh, pride and proud. Um, um, what happened? Where did we go? OK, next, University of Montana. Um, because we had cross-infuse uh, uh, workshop, uh, those uh, institutions funded through National Science Foundation, and uh, they got together and talked about, okay, how we can collaborate. You know, we have our own individual projects, we have our own individual emphasis, and the way we are really developing innovative uh, uh, educational programs for graduate students, so how we can work and further enhance these, uh, these programs, educational programs. Becca is here again, and with other team members, faculty members. Um, um, Kalita Chief uh, is a faculty member in Swiss Department, Soil Water Environmental Sciences. She's our lead in this project, our PI, and she's a Navajo uh, lady. And, um, and with our graduate students, again, uh, our program coordinator, Kara, uh, participated in this uh, really um, uh, exciting workshop uh, really intense, uh, I, I hope Becca agrees with me, intense roundtable discussions moving from one room to another, uh, writing a lot on the wall uh, to develop really um, a roadmap uh, for, uh, uh, for the uh, uh, enhancement of these educational uh, programs. Then I went to Istanbul. Uh, this was very, uh, uh, you know, this was just uh, before the school starting for 10 days. Um, once again, to attend the Executive Committee of uh, International Society of Horticultural Sciences to report back, uh, but also involve in-depth discussions about restructuring of this society. The, these uh, uh, international societies are going through structural changes, like we had a couple of uh, years ago with Agricultural and Biological Engineering Society. Uh, this society is also going through uh, changes. We have commissions and also sections referring to commodities or commissions referring to different technology applications. Now they're all gone. Now we have divisions of uh, uh, different uh, um, emphasis areas. And our division, our commission became from commission horticulture to division precision horticulture and engineering. And, um, um, and that's uh, what we will have for the next, uh, next, uh, next term. 
So I went there also for International Horticultural Congress. This is the, the biggest, uh, the largest Congress that this society has every four year. So every year, the society has small symposiums like the one that I showed you from Beijing under different divisions and commissions. Every four years, the society brings all the commissions and sections together to have this uh, wonderful Congress with about 3,000, 3,500 people attending uh, to this Congress. And this happened to be the 30th International Horticultural Congress uh, in Istanbul. And, um, and I was, uh, I just saw uh, Merle has on his uh, bag, if he shows that to you, he's still uh, keeping that. That's the 22nd International Horticultural Congress that was in uh, Davis, right? Uh, back in 1986, I believe. That's awesome. So what I also had to do for this Congress was to serve as one of the conveners among four other conveners to organize this symposium, Innovation on New Technologies in, prote in Protected Cultivation, as well as helping to actually um, organize this Mechanization, Precision, Horticulture, and Robotics uh, Symposium, as well as a workshop, two workshops on uh, UAVs, as well as phenotyping for horticultural crops. So this took us more than a year to really uh, develop the program, communicate with uh, 60 uh, oral presentations and 50 poster presentations, making sure that we have uh, the abstract received, the, the full text papers received, and, um, and all that nice stuff. So <clears throat> we had keynote speakers again, uh, Marisa Gallardo from uh, uh, Spain, uh, talking about uh, decision support systems, a modeling approach to analyze uh, uh, nitrogen and water requirements for uh, various uh, vegetable species grown in greenhouses. Uh, Stefania De Pascale from Italy, um, she talked about um, uh, bio um, uh, stimulants, which is becoming a common practice in agriculture, providing some beneficial functions. And we have research actually going on here, oh, sorry, uh, here at the center. And also, um, Abital Bechar talked about robotics, mechanization applications uh, for not only uh, orchard-based, field-based uh, horticulture, but also controlled environment-based horticulture applications, uh, human-robot interaction, uh, inter interacting systems uh, uh, in precision uh, horticulture. Um, these are the main emphasis and the topics that were highlighted and discussed during these symposiums in the protected cultivation greenhouse covering materials, new materials, photovoltaics, maybe future covering uh, technology for greenhouses, LED lighting again is there, CO2 injection and control, smart CO2 injection and control applications, enhancing, really focusing on resources efficiency as the metric when we talk about uh, different production systems, modeling, crop growth, effect of light quality, bioactive compounds, virtual reality, life cycle assessment, um, and biostimulants, and there was another actually symposium just focusing on organics, organic horticulture. So there was also a lot of interest in that area. In the robotic sensing uh, and mechanization uh, symposium, uh, main focus was again on uh, detection techniques uh, with spectral sensing techniques uh, for plant health and growth analyses, uh, designing and implementation of a low cost microcontroller in control environment agriculture systems. That was my second talk from our group activity here in the vertical farm facility with Anna Montaya who visited us from um, Colombia for about uh, five months. Um, Multi-scale high throughput phenotyping typing systems, image-based non-destructive estimation of plant growth, um, precision uh, agriculture, uh, UAVs, multi-spectral imaging has been among those uh, topics that were discussed in that, uh, in those two symposiums. Um, here again, executive committee meeting, three, four days meeting before the Congress started. Uh, here I was really honored to receive the ISHS medal and the certificate um, for my uh, 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 service uh, as the commission, outgoing commission chair of the Precision Horticulture Group uh, or the, uh, the, the division. Uh, and, and I was elected uh, also the new incoming division chair for the Precision Horticulture and Engineering. Here are my colleagues, uh, our conveners for the Protected Horticulture Symposium. 
during my presentation here um, and um, and uh, really joining and meeting with our uh, friends from around the world. Uh, we also had a fun time, uh, had a gala dinner in a beautiful restaurant, having a boat ride in Bosphorus, going to the restaurant here. Um, it's this is amazing. As you walk outside of the classroom or the presentation room there, you have two, three people around you. By the time you were around the corner and just stepping out of the conference center, we were about 30 people. And then just looking for fun, fun time together, so we can enjoy the dinner uh, together with them. Here's Jean with our uh, director of the ISHS, uh, as well as the vice chair, uh, former vice chair of the uh, ISHS board. Um, uh, these are some shots that I was able to take during that uh, tour: uh, a castle in Bosphorus, uh, the Bosphorus Bridge, the Dolmabahce Palace. This is a greenhouse in Dolmabahce Palace from early 19th century. So that was really a great architectural uh, greenhouse uh, that is still beautiful uh, there. And then here is in, in Bosphorus. Um, these are some of the scheduled uh, event symposiums coming up. So those of you who have interest, I really highly encourage you to attend and consider encouraging others to attend. So Greenstead Symposium is actually very attractive. So we already scheduled that until uh, 2021. Uh, so the 19th this year, we will be in Angers, France uh, for Greenseas 19. And 2021, Greenseas will be in Cancun, Mexico, organized by our own uh, Efren Fitz and one other colleague, uh, Irene Lopez, who's organizing that meeting. Then we're going to have light in horticulture symposium in Alnarp, Sweden. Um, and then these are some of the new symposiums and workshops actually approved. Uh, during the meetings in, uh, in, in Istanbul. And we are going to have a workshop on vertical farming. Um, and that will be organized by Leo Marcellis, myself, and um, Francesco Orsini from Italy. Uh, this will be in Wageningen University uh, um, in October. And there is other workshops on protected cultivation. Um, this will be in, um, in Italy. And we have another meeting in um, Australia on aquaponics and hydroponics uh, systems, and another one on uh, innovation and uh, advanced technologies uh, for uh, circular horticulture. That will be in Italy as well uh, in the next uh, year or so. Uh, another symposium here scheduled for Canary Island uh, on protective cultivation in mild winter climates and nettings. There is interest also in netting systems. And another one in Belgium on uh, growing media, soilless cultivation, and compost utilization in horticulture. These are the symposiums that my commission, my division, now interacts and endorses and uh, uh, actively uh, uh, participates in the, in the development. So these are some of the observations from these travels. And the common theme here is that uh, we are all aware of the challenges, the grand challenges we have in front, in front of us, right? We need to feed people, ever-increasing population as we look at the next several decades, limited water, limited resources, and the arable land being limited and decreasing. And also, while we're addressing these challenges, to produce more food that was ever actually produced in the history of mankind in the next uh, several decades, uh, and we are going to do this when we are also keeping people happy and healthy. So in order to meet that challenge, I think we are going to have integrated systems, not only controlled environment agriculture, but also um, field-based systems, kind of really comp uh, in a complementary fashion uh, a a addressing these uh, challenges. So these will be different technology platforms when it comes to controlled environment agriculture, greenhouses, vertical farms, rooftops, indoors with lighting, um, and also alternative crops, um, you know, uh, with proteins and uh, other alternative uh, crops, pharmaceuticals, nutraceuticals. Um, why CEA? I don't want to go through the list because CEA can offer these possibilities. It can really enhance the resource use when it comes to food production, especially for high value uh, uh, crops. And it is also envisioned and now more discussed as being one of the uh, toolkit items as we look at future sustainable farming systems for nutritional uh, security. Um, and we will see more 
more applications of digital agriculture, smart agriculture, as we are, you know, talk and attracted towards the the um, the opportunities uh, that is brought by the fourth industrial revolution, connecting the physical, biological, uh, digital systems uh, and its interaction with the humans. Um, and these are some of the emerging technologies, Internet of Things, smart greenhouse systems, management practices, as I mentioned, argumented and virtual reality applications. This could be a beautiful educational tool, for example. Um, maybe not direct control of the greenhouse or a vertical farming system, but it can be part of the educational uh, program. Uh, robotics, we are really going to need robotics applications, automation. There will be a need to revise the systems, redesign the production systems. Maybe we will sacrifice from the yield, but we will definitely address and enhance the resource use in terms of labor use that's going into the production. So there will be some balancing, some uh, uh, interaction there as we look at newer, newer designs to make the systems more practical, more economical uh, when, it, when they are integrated to control the environment agriculture systems. Um, great development on um, urban agriculture uh, technology platforms, rooftop uh, uh, greenhouses, again, vertical farms, and also new technologies for covering uh, materials with photovoltaics as the technology is advancing. I would like to, I'm just dreaming that as one day we'll have a greenhouse that will be energy neutral and it will be, you know, producing its own energy uh, uh, demands. Yes, we may sacrifice maybe a little bit from the, the yield, but then we will have the energy requirement, energy uh, challenges being addressed in the denominator of that equation, really helping us to improve resource efficiency. So I see great potentials and strategic applications of these technologies because they offer great potentials, impactful applications for certain localities, for certain climatic uh, locations, communities. Um, well, while we're doing all of this and addressing the challenges uh, here on Earth, uh, there, is an, there is a great uh, opportunity and, and interest there also uh, for space colonization, where we will really need bioregenerative life support system. This center and this program has been in the forefront of that with our Lunar Mars Greenhouse programs, and we still have students interested, excited about it. There is a new funding that just came uh, with the use of uh, uh, nanotechnology for, uh, for a light system uh, that is part of a NASA funding. So I hope that we will see more of that because we have unique facilities that we should be leveraging more and actually uh, taking advantage of that. Um, so that will require uh, enhance improved communications and uh, collaborative uh, working. Um, through my travels, I am just coming to my, uh, you know, end, I think, with my presentations. Through these travelings, I also, I, mean, I know you also are feeling the same way you're hearing about this. As I travel these institutions and these meetings, through these meetings, I see a lot of investment, a lot of interest, a lot of support from local state funding agencies and universities, uh, administrations, uh, really excited about controlled environment agriculture because they see the trend, they see the potential there. We are asked for more graduates who are needed, understanding the plant, the biology, the engineering, to be able to operate these systems, to work in these systems. And here, Cornell receiving $20 million for four-year period from a state funding source that is total of 500 million 20 million dedicated to the science, Plant Science Innovation Center initiative uh, with greenhouse systems, control environment agriculture applications. Here I talked about North Carolina State University with their initiative for control environment act. Ohio State University investing $30 million. They have the money already spared to build their next generation control environment agriculture and animal science based programs. They're not only investing on facilities, but they're also investing on people because people are also important. So hopefully we will have, again, the opportunity to grow these programs because we lost some of our faculty members in the past. And I really believe, really, really believe that it is the interaction, the multidisciplinary nature of this program that makes us unique. You know, plant sciences, engineering, and others, economy, nutritional sciences, that 
Students are really excited about collaborative degree programs, not just the traditional degree names and programs that we used to know. Uh, they're excited about urban agriculture, urban horticulture, smart ag, digital ag. So hopefully um, we will see uh, uh, um, more growth in that area. And I also see developments around the world. These are just few that I was able to include. To keep it short, STD Mah Center in Saudi Arabia, in Riyadh, they build their high tech and with low tech and medium tech greenhouse operations uh, connected with the commercial sector uh, to really grow and, and start their um, uh, new controlled environment agriculture systems programs. So I hope, this is just a, a quick artist rendering, we just need a, a touch from an architect on this, that we could go for the next UACAC 2.0, the Center of Excellence for Controlled Environment Agriculture. We have the history, we have the expertise, we have some of the facilities that we can leverage, but I think we can build more, we can enhance these facilities and bring together other programs because we are we are we are spotty. We are uh, kind of um, remote from each other with greater programs, such as what we are doing here and what Barry is doing across the street there with the mushroom programs and the gargi with the insects, aquaculture programs. Um, we can bring those together. These have been the discussions that we had. Maybe using and enhancing some of the facilities we have in one central location. A, a, another version of the vertical farming facility we have, associated labs and offices here. Uh, I know there are initiatives, there are some developments across the street from nutritional science department with their culinary kitchen program. I know there's an interest, there is a facility across the street, a wine cellar, an interest in, in, in wine, you know. Um, uh, so um, maybe we can be connected a lot more closely. Here's the Pima County Extension Services on Tucson Village Farms. Um, it will be great to move the natural products programs, research facilities here. They're down in the, um, you know, uh, in the distance. And also really close to work with the integrative medicine programs. And with a, 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 a better, actually, uh, improved facility here, uh, we could have a smart city in its center being a, a new generation controlled environment agriculture center facilities and programs uh, really integrated with the urban interface, techno demo park or parks where people can come and walk, maybe a restaurant, a cafe, or maybe farmer's market. So we, we would be more connected. You know, people can walk around here and then we can do our thing, you know, but we can have a section that we can really have them access a lot more closely uh, and in an attractive uh, in an attractive way. So I hope that we, we go in this direction. Um, I am excited. I hope you're excited in some of this and uh, we, we can kind of uh, pitch this or, or, or uh, uh, present this idea in a better a, a presentation mode. Um, because I think uh, this center and program really deserves it because the University of Arizona is the only land grant school in the Sonoran Desert with the history, with the expertise and experiences really to address the challenges when it comes to field and controlled environment based agriculture. Uh, we have interdisciplinary programs, basic sciences and applied sciences in, you know, engineering, technology, math, and genetics, genomics, molecular biology. Um, we have great interdisciplinary programs. We are relevant. As I, again, go through these meetings, the, the research activity that we have or education programs that we have are relevant to those being discussed uh, for now and for future. Um, and also, connection with the public, the stakeholders, the extension programs, outreach programs. So we're doing great things uh, uh, in, these, uh, in these activities. <coughs> and you're driven by the future uh, as we are educating and trying to meet the industry's demand for next uh, generation uh, students, uh, research and development activities uh, towards sustainable uh, food production systems uh, in controlled environments really nourishing the interdisciplinary nature of these programs, uh, further encouraging that collaboration and collaboratory, and also really really focusing on uh, growing further our um, uh, 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 connection with the industry towards more value-added interactions and participation for research and uh, educational um, activities. So that has been my travel log uh, for the past year. 
I traveled a total of 76,542 miles. I think that's equal to uh, three times the length of the equator. Um, why do I do this? Well, some of that because, because of the activities that I, 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 I am supposed to do, because I'm interested in doing that, because I love what we're doing here collaboratively, and I like to share that when I travel, because I have good friends and colleagues around the world, and I, I really uh, love seeing them uh, once in a while and making new friendships. Um, and also giving the opportunity to our uh, students to uh, when when I uh, travel. So, well, of course, this doesn't happen um, you know, working alone. And I would like to acknowledge and thank to everyone involved, including yourself. And thank you for your interest, your your uh, enthusiasm uh, for controlled environment agriculture. I want to thank all of our government uh, and industrial sponsors and collaborators, administrators academic units involved in CA programs, faculty, staff, students, and volunteer teams that we have here, and also the campus agricultural uh, team and great support that we have. Please keep being, keep your excitement and keep supporting us, you know, uh, be involved in what we're doing and let's try to do this together. For those of you who are uh, not really familiar and new to our programs, please visit us at this uh, website. and. Yes, I think that's it. That's that's my travel. Up. And by the way, that that image, I don't want to take the credit. I think it was, uh, I think, designed or uh, uh, produced by one of our uh, former uh, students. I, I believe Sarah Lam. I might be wrong, but I, that's why that's what my memory is. Yeah. Right. Wow! Wow! What an exciting presentation! And you can't ask, ask the first question. You have to. Work. Because I wanted to ask, it seems to me that agriculture is taking a tremendous change, a transformation into a very heavy input from technologies. Would you comment on what steps have been taking or being taken in order to prepare the next generation of scientists, agricultural uh, experts in the curriculum that affects the students that are here? Yeah, I think that's a great question. And now, since the technology is really changing in a way that is really fast pace, and in terms of the research we do, in terms of our experiences, you know, we are looking really into um, our curriculums and really discussing about and already started uh, revising our uh, curriculum and, and offerings, educational offerings, um, because the, the demand of the industry is different. Uh, they are looking for uh, different skill sets, not only the technicality, but also other soft skills and uh, uh, a really diverse skill set is, is, is required and requested. And also the student's interest. Um, um, is is also uh, is a factor here. Um, a so these are you know these are already the discussions that is ongoing. Uh, as I mentioned, the collaborative programs, new degree offerings are being discussed, really to meet this interest that you're describing, uh, because uh, in order to actually uh, meet the requirements in terms of skill sets, the next generation students, uh, we have to be working a lot more closely, collaboratively, uh, as we really uh, uh, form these new uh, educational uh, programs and activities. And also with research, too, uh, with research as well. Um, so that's, um, that's how I see um, as we look at the future. Well, there are children who have a microphone. Oh. <laughs> Yeah, one thing I want to mention to the young group here, the, the, the controlled environment coinage started here at the U of A, okay? But what I wanted to mention, you, you had met hundreds of scientists all over the world. Did you have any presentation on how we can take controlled environment agriculture to the millions and millions of poor people in this planet that are suffering, that could have under shelter 
protection against disease and rain. We, we are talking about critical farms, we're talking about strawberries, but there's a whole new opening of what we're going to do with the poor of the world and how to adapt this so that we can feed all the billions of people that we have on this planet. Did you see anyone anywhere that said any talk at all addressing the poor? Mm, absolutely. Um, um, I think that's a, gr that's a great point, and I think we need more of that um, emphasis and, and, and focus and discussions um, and develop uh, means and, and platforms to be able to do that better and improve that. Um, Yes, there are discussions because we have uh, uh, a network of group and people also uh, working on education uh, and outreach uh, when it comes to horticulture and that includes controlled environment agriculture. Uh, that was the reason that, uh, as I mentioned, the society really going to the uh, African region to be able to connect with them uh, so we can really bring the horticulture there and really to help the communities there. And I gave an example of uh, our NSF effort connecting with the developing communities and, you know, indigenous people being, you know, as an example here, but they are around the world. So what we are doing here with that project is actually uh, going to help us to address the challenges of those indigenous people around the world. But I know what you're referring to because we had a, just a discussion that you have some, some interests, some activities, and you're already working about it. Uh, and again, we need more of that, connecting with the smallholder farmer, farmers. Uh, I was interested in doing that when I first started the solar energy project here through Bill Melinda Gate programs uh, targeting sub-Saharan Africa. Um, and being able to connect remotely, providing uh, uh, you know, remote advising. Uh, I think we need more of those because we have the technology, we have the internet of things, we have platforms that could enable us to do that. We don't have to be on the site. Uh, directly working with uh, with uh, developing communities, so I hope that we will uh, we will uh, focus on those uh, programs and you know means to 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 achieve this. So thank you for you know, asking that question. Anybody else? Please wait for the microphone. Oh, you're recording. I, I mean, I can yell loud enough for everybody. Uh, just kind of a question observation. When you talked about interdisciplinary, uh, I didn't hear economics. Um, and the reason is that I'm mentioning that is because 75% of the projects that you just mentioned, and I see it in agriculture all the time, are destined to fail, uh, basically because they just don't get the numbers right. Uh, it's mm -hmm. not necessarily a question of biology as much as it is a question of numbers. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, yes, that's that's very important. Um, sometimes we may, uh, you know, uh, overlook uh, the economics, uh, but uh, we discuss about the uh, the business, you know, economics in these in these projects too, and we need more of that discussion. When I mentioned, you know, we need to really uh, develop uh, a metrics uh, uh, that we can use or the growers can use uh, uh, when they form their business plans or operations, or when we work as engineers or plant scientists uh, in terms of you know really uh, paying attention to those metrics, not just the yield, but resource use efficiency, as I mentioned. What is your output versus what is your input? Uh, we are more. We are having more discussions in terms of life cycle assessments, um, being able to compare systems one to another. Uh, these are needed discussions, and I thank you for bringing that up. Um, um, and and for these uh, operations or or, or, or or businesses not to fail again. Uh, uh, they will need these metrics, develop strong business plans, and and also have uh, the uh, the teams and 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 people who are actually knowing the plant, knowing the system, knowing the engineering. Uh, that has been also lacking. Uh, you see investors excited, investors excited in these facilities and technology pro platforms, uh, bringing together a large group of uh, um, expertise, but I, I see lacking of connectivity. You know, how do you connect those expertise to make this business or, 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 or technology to function? Uh, I think these are the things that, that we need. Um, definitely, really, uh, the economics is, is, is key. And I have one of those in my house. My wife is an economist, so when I talk, I, I get the same comments uh, and the same uh, questions as well, but very important point. Dr. Orobo. I see that um, 
that, that Dr. Uh, Tollefson is not here. And so um, I was going to suggest maybe that you uh, discuss in relationship to this uh, the new class offerings that, that uh, she's going to be uh, proposing and the major in controlled environment agriculture that, that she is working on, which will include economics and business planning and, and entrepreneurship. Things mm -hmm. like that. Yeah. Um, yeah, sure. So um, this is coming again from that um, point that, or came from the question, you know, uh, really uh, uh, meeting the requirements requirement or the expectation from the industry in terms of the graduates and the skill sets that we would like to uh, offer and, 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 and um, give to our students. Um, because of that, we need, we are looking into revising our curriculums and enhancing that. So there has been discussions about, again, um, and there are already actually initiatives from other academic units to kind of revise their programs on sustainable agriculture, uh, or uh, food system, and this has been also ongoing in, in the uh, biosystems engineering department uh, because there uh, has been a growth in the, uh, especially in the data analytics area, data sciences area, but we had some discussions about the uh, possibility of uh, maybe a, a non-engineering degree program for controlled environment agriculture, and that requires uh, new classes, new courses, uh, based on our discussions with our industry advisory board. We have a controlled environment agriculture center industry advisory board that we formed last year. And we, uh, based on their request and input, uh, uh, that we would uh, develop such program and, and revise our uh, curriculum. Uh, and so this would also include uh, some of our existing courses with an enhanced, improved way. So uh, Stacy's course, for example, on introductory and advanced level hydroponics, Gene's course on controlled environment agriculture uh, systems, my course on instrumentation uh, for controlled environment agriculture, um, discussions on Joel's course on fluid water energy nexus, and, and also on top of that, add more courses, newer courses. Um, we talked about food safety, uh, mycology, different products, different uh, 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 production systems, uh, economics, entrepreneurship. Um, these are the courses that we would like to see in our program. So Stacy has been uh, working uh, on this, uh, kind of drafting the programs with inputs from our uh, team here, uh, uh, faculty and, and staff. And uh, we are still ongoing in this discussion. It's not really, uh, really uh, uh, finalized, uh, but we are excited about it. And hopefully uh, it would be supported. So, uh, but it's an ongoing discussion and process as I uh, kind of respond to your question, Pat. Yeah, thank you again. Uh, hopefully, because if you are proposing new programs, uh, there's a deadline and it's really approaching fast, approaching very, very quickly. Any other questions? If not, I'd like to thank you again. And I think everybody else feels the same way. You have set a very high bar especially for scientific travelogues, and we look forward for the next seminar, which will be given by um, Martin Doré from Laval University, Canada, and she also will be talking about uh, new developments in sensor technology as applied to CAA. Mm -hmm. So I hope to have you come back here the last Friday of September, same time, same place, lots of refreshments. Please come back. Thank you all for coming. Thank you. Thank you. Good. I know somebody did comment on there. Yeah, right. I've got comments. Oh, oh, no, no questions. Oh, 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 yeah, <laughs> 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 <laughs>
Audio, huh? audio? Yeah, but look, he, he had it back again. I, I never saw it lost. It must have popped out for him for a second. Yeah, that one came this came in right at the end. And there weren't questions I didn't relay. Him. Usually we'll relay them on this. Good. Wonderful. Thank you so much.